Hey, have you ever gotten feedback like, I don't understand what this is. I'm not sure that's gonna work for us. I think you can do better than this. Well, reference gathering is the answer to your problem. How do I know this? I've been through it a lot. We're able to charge six figures on our projects now because we shifted our focus into sharpening our discovery and research process. And a huge part of that success was thanks to Reference Gathering. I'm Miles. I'm the co-founder of Suits and Sandals, a boutique agency here in Brooklyn, New York. And today, I'm gonna share with you what I do, how I do it, and I'll even make a sample project for this video. I'm gonna have to come up with that. And if you stick around until the end, I'll tell you why our presentations actually lead to more business. Let's go. There are three things that I always need before jumping in. Let me show you. What are the project goals? What does the client like? Who is the target audience? I used to just jump right in without those answers and it was such a mess. You see, it's not about finding the coolest things, it's about finding useful things. Every reference needs to have a purpose and answer specific questions. And for this video, let's come up with a fake project so I can really show you the overall process. Let's say we're building a, uh, a to-do list app. No, a website for a to-do list app that's going to change the game, but how? It's not important. The answer to the three questions is important. For the app's website, let's say that the project goals are to highlight the features of the product. What does the client like? Let's say lots of personality and character in the design. So something playful. That seems realistic. Let's say that the target audience uh, let's just say that they're designers. The target audience, designers. That's the bare minimum of what I need to get started. All right, you're still here, good. Let's talk about my process and the tools I use. And after that, I can share how I present all of this. I always start with landscape research, looking at competitors, things like that. Reference gathering process isn't just for introducing new ideas to my clients. It's also an exercise to validate that I personally understand the space that they're in. Developing trust, you know? Once I have a good sense of their competitors, I'll start venturing off and looking at similar-ish types of brands. So instead of just to-do apps, I'll maybe look into calendars, note-taking apps, any productivity app in general. You get the idea. Hey, quick tip, when you're taking screenshots on your Mac or PC, make sure you have the default destination for where that screenshot file goes set to the folder that you're actually working in because otherwise you just have a bunch of screenshots on your desktop and the next thing you know, it's super messy. Just set the destination that you need. All right, back to it. Okay, quick recap. We're gathering website references for a to-do list app. We also have some general understanding on what the client is looking for, who the target audience is, and overall just what the product goals are. Next step is to generate a large list of websites that I wanna go and visit, study, and take screenshots of. But where do we go for that? Well, one of the quickest ways to find competitive, comparative, and even aspirational brands is through AI. It's not perfect by any means, but using AI to generate large lists is a great starting point. Okay, so now we have a large list of websites that we can look at and study. This, this next part is my favorite. Let me show you. When I'm evaluating websites and gathering references, there's usually five areas that I like to make sure I take shots of. Homepage heroes, screenshot graphics and ornaments, screenshot for sure, product features content, screenshot of UI patterns, screenshot but not too crazy, only the good ones, unique sections. Screenshot that bit. Okay, so at this point, I have a pretty good batch of images in my folder. I've been using Figma recently to gather all of my references. This tends to change just depending on the level of detail that I actually need for the project. This video, we're going with Figma. Let me show you the other options that I would typically use. Pure Ref is the fastest. Quick drag and drops. It's pretty limited in general, but sometimes that's a good thing. Milano is a really visual environment. It's like Trello, but better. If I need a lot of organization and separation, then that's my go-to. Notion is the option for when I need organization, notes, and a way to filter and sort through my categories. I'll typically use that so that I can tag all of my references and be able to kind of sift through them and compare them. Love me some Notion. And Google Sheets is Google Sheets. We tend to not use it unless a client specifically requested it. But like I said, today we're using good old Figma. 
Let me show you how I use it. I created a general section for each of the types of references I captured. These buckets are just really rough guidelines to make sense of all the references that I'm going to be bringing in. Once I have my references placed, I'll look for similarities between them and try to understand why they might have gone with the solutions that they went with. So here, I can see that they're trying to tell a story with one static asset. By overlaying these two images and having the Asana task UI float on top, this creates a nice mesh between the app and the people using them, right? It's integrated into their lives. This one, it's a really nice play with text and experience. The title and especially the word choose really captures your attention. Thinking about the project goal and how we need to really highlight the product features, this is probably a really great UI solution to show the different features and expand upon each without overwhelming the user. So whether I'm actually writing it down or just kind of going through it in my head, I'm making sure that for each of my references, I'm doing this level of analysis. Naturally, patterns tend to emerge. It's really powerful when you're able to find and identify these patterns because they say two things. One, other companies have done it, so this is a proven and tested way. Two, this also shows that everyone's kind of doing the same thing. So there's an opportunity here to tell your client about a way to stand out. The last step here is to organize and edit to make sure that everything in here makes sense, has a purpose, and answers my three questions in some way. Now it's time to present. Here's how I do it. The most important thing I do is I keep the tone of this presentation more of a collaborative workshopping type of exercise rather than a really serious presentation. So important, so let me just drive that home one more time. When I start my presentations, I make it very clear that this is a time for everyone to collaborate as a team to talk through all the references that I'll be presenting today. While it's definitely nice to really impress and surprise your clients, I don't really believe in having kind of this TED talk like environment when I'm presenting. I want it to really set the stage that this is an open conversation. Everything is loose and flexible, especially how early we are in the entire project. This is great because I become more of a moderator who happens to be an expert in design rather than someone prescribing something to a client who might not even be receptive to my suggestions. So when a client says something like, this is terrible, I could respond with, it's surprising that this app with such huge amount of followers has such a poor design aesthetic, but what about this for you is shockingly bad. This is kind of the conversational dynamic that I'm after. In this way, the client never really blames me or thinks that I have poor taste in design and start to question my skill. I'm simply showing them what's out there and I can be on their side because I am. And I can even agree or disagree just without stress. I disagree by explaining and kind of theorizing why a designer might have chosen that particular visual solution. Design education. I'm now in a position of authority and someone who's an expert that can explain these types of things. And my client will really appreciate that and respect me for that. Really, this is why they hired me. I can enlighten them and teach them about different types of design solutions, the good and the bad. Of course, I don't actually know exactly why the designers chose the designs that they went with, but being able to reverse engineer these types of references is really important. As I'm presenting, I'm also taking tons of notes on all of the positive and negative reactions that they're giving me. At the end of the presentation, I should now know which references that everyone was agreeing on and getting excited about. I'll grab all of these and put them into a new target reference board. Because by looping them into the process this closely, they're able to kind of see where ideas are coming from. They're never surprised or kind of discouraged or upset that they're seeing something that they don't like. They're able to see where that idea came from. They've already approved it when you were still gathering references. And once I start showing designs to my clients, designs that I made, I already know that they've already approved about 50% of it, even before I show it to them because they've seen all the little steps 
all of the inspirations and references that led me to this final design. I hope that gives you an idea on my overall reference gathering process. I'll catch you on the next one.